We can perform operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication on polynomials, just like we did with numbers. In example four, we want to find the sum of the given polynomial expression. For this problem, even though it's written with parentheses, we can basically just ignore those because the parentheses don't have any impact on the problem. There's nothing inside either set of parentheses that we can combine because there's no like terms and there's nothing to distribute through, which we'll see in example five is different. So in this case, we can simply drop those parentheses and to simplify this, we'll look at just combining like terms. For instance, we have negative five B squared and one B squared. Even though we don't write the one out in front, it's implied that there's a coefficient of one there. So we can combine those like terms to make this negative four B squared minus B plus seven minus 20 B plus six. Then we can either continue to take this one step at a time or as we grow more comfortable with this, we can knock out multiple steps at a time. For instance, we can combine minus one B and minus 20 B and we can combine plus seven and plus six since those are like terms to get negative four B squared minus 21B plus 13. Example five is gonna be very similar, except for the fact that now we're subtracting these two polynomial expressions. Since we're subtracting that entire second expression inside a set of parentheses, we'll have to distribute that negative through each term. That means our first polynomial will remain unchanged. And when we get to the second polynomial, now we'll flip the sign of each term because we're multiplying each term by negative one. This will become plus three X squared minus 15 X plus five. And then again, we can combine like terms by looking at the variable component. If the variable component is the same, we can simply add those coefficients together. Negative six plus three will end up giving us negative three X squared. 13 minus 15 will give us negative two X. And then nine plus five will give us 14. In the next two examples, we want to look at finding the product of two polynomials, more specifically the product of two binomials. We're multiplying these expressions together, and what we'll have to do is keep in mind that to do that, we have to distribute the first term in the first binomial across both of the terms in the second binomial, and we need to do that with the second term as well. It needs to get multiplied by both terms in that second binomial. Our trick for helping us remember how to account for all those steps, if we're multiplying together two binomials like this, is to FOIL that. So we multiply the first terms, outside terms, inside terms, and then the last terms to get our final expression. Multiplying our first terms, we'll take the 2x from that first binomial times the 2x from the second binomial. Then we'll look at our outside terms. That will be the two X from the first binomial times the minus one from the second binomial. For the inside terms, that will be the one from the first binomial multiplied by the two X from the second binomial. And then for the last terms, we'll take the positive one times the negative one. That's our first outside, inside, and last pairs multiplied together. And now we'll just multiply together and simplify where we can. This will become four X squared minus two X plus two X minus one. Then in this case, we can see that combining those two X terms 
we'll just cancel out. Negative two plus two will give us zero x for a final answer of four x squared minus one. Similarly, in example seven, we can start off by multiplying the first pair of values together. So we'll take 4c times 2c plus the outside pair, 4c times negative 1 plus the inside pair, 5 times 2c plus the last pair, 5 times negative 1. From there, we'll multiply together and then simplify if we can. This will be 8c squared minus 4c plus 10c minus 5. Then we can combine those two like terms in the middle to get 8c squared plus 6c minus 5.